With Hyperloop research and development advancing like never before, the first operational system is on the cusp of becoming a reality. Despite routes being proposed in the United States, United Arab Emirates, India, Scandinavia and Mexico, at the time of filming, no scheme has received the full commitment of a national government or private corporation. With Hyperloop technology maturing at a rapid rate and the concept set to have a revolutionary impact, we've theorised 10 routes that could change our world. Before we begin, it's important to explain the criteria that we have used to determine these concepts. While routes from New York to London or from Cairo to Cape Town are impressive to theorise, the technology, logistics and economics required to make them happen often renders them unviable. To determine the most credible proposals, we developed five criteria. Capacity, considering the number of people that each route has the potential to connect. Influence, the importance or influence of each city to its respective region. Connectivity, the existing connections and the demand for routes between cities. Geological, the consideration of natural barriers like oceans, forests or mountain ranges that can make routes impractical. And geopolitical, considering the movement of people across borders, the ability to finance such a Hyperloop system and the degree of cooperation between countries. First up, we have a route that could revolutionise the east coast of Australia. With 80% of the country's population residing in the eastern states, linking the major economic centres of the nation's largest cities to more affordable regional areas would bring access to new employment and housing opportunities, creating a mega-region along the Pacific coast. The route would link Melbourne to Brisbane, a distance of 1,500 kilometres, in less than two hours. Along the way, the East Australian Hyperloop would connect to the nation's capital, Canberra, Australia's largest city, Sydney, and the regional cities of Newcastle and the Gold Coast. The route would have a catchment of over 14 million people, which is around 60% of Australia's entire population. Other towns and cities along the route could link into the system as demand rose. With Australia currently laying claim to the second and eighth busiest flight routes in the world, with 54,000 flights between Melbourne and Sydney each year, and Sydney to Brisbane seeing 33,000 flights each year, the demand to link these cities and eliminate the time wasted in airports makes a significant case for investing in Hyperloop. Renowned for embracing the latest technology and with a densely populated mainland, Japan is a prime candidate for Hyperloop. Despite being an archipelago with mountainous terrain, six of the country's seven largest cities lie in relatively close proximity to one another on the main island of Honshu. A hyperloop from Tokyo to the city of Kobe via Yokohama, Nagoya, Kyoto and Osaka would unite a region of more than 65 million people that has a combined GDP of more than 2.8 trillion US dollars. While Japan has long been a champion of high-speed rail, Hyperloop is expected to travel at twice the rate of the country's bullet trains. This would make the entire trip end-to-end -end less than 35 minutes compared to the current two and a half hours by bullet train and open the possibility of working in Tokyo or Kyoto while living in Nagoya where the cost of living is much more reasonable. With China's urban population booming, linking cities more effectively would allow its economy to continue to grow while taking pressure off housing in some of the country's most densely occupied megacities. Hong Kong and Shanghai are both at the centre of two of China's most important mega-regions, the Pearl and Yangtze river deltas. While China has invested heavily in transport links between these cities, the efficiency of the Hyperloop system 
is almost impossible to compete with. Covering 1,700 kilometers in a cross-country arc, the entire route would get you from Hong Kong to Shanghai in less than two and a half hours. This route has the potential to make inland cities like Wuhan and Changsha much more influential, sitting at the heart of a route just over an hour from the economic hubs that make up 40% of the Chinese economy. Set to become the world's most populated country by 2025, India is extremely well placed to benefit from an end-to-end -end Hyperloop route. With the number of flights between Delhi and Mumbai reaching 47,000 in 2017, it's no wonder this region is the first in a series of major industrial corridors that are planned for the country. The 100 billion US dollar Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor, or DMIC, is one of the world's largest infrastructure projects. Its objective is to link India's major cities, allowing them to draw on one another's manufacturing, logistical and human resources, and helping the nation become a world leader in manufacturing. With Mumbai, Delhi and Kolkata, each expected to have populations in excess of 50 million by 2100, an end-to-end -end Hyperloop system would have a catchment area of over 200 million people. At 4,000 kilometers in length, this route would put all three centers less than two hours apart in either direction, greatly boosting the region. When it comes to international routes for Hyperloop, one of the most important elements to consider is financial cooperation to fund the project and the ease at which people can move between countries. The fundamentals of the European Union address these criteria very directly. While Brussels is widely accepted as the capital of the EU, administrative functions and branches also sit in Strasbourg and Luxembourg. Combine this with the European Central Bank located in Frankfurt and Europol in The Hague, and the process of moving politicians and government officials between these five centres can present a logistical headache for bureaucrats. Linking these administrative regions with economic centres along the route, like Antwerp, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Dusseldorf, Cologne and Paris, could create an efficient loop that connects over 25 million people and puts each city less than an hour from the others. The UK's thriving capital has living costs far above the national average, housing prices that are unattainable for most, and an infrastructure system that is continually playing catch-up. While other cities offer a more affordable option, the draw of big business to London means that many people have little choice but to work there. By connecting the high-paying jobs of the capital to the more affordable economic and manufacturing centres in the Midlands and Northern regions, the UK could address issues like housing, the pay squeeze and infrastructure spending. While high-speed rail projects to connect the South East and the Midlands are already under development, a hyperloop between Edinburgh and London would bring the two cities within 45 minutes of each other and connect four of the country's largest urban areas. While not as well known as the European Union, the countries of Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay are all members of a trade bloc known as Mercosur, or the Southern Common Market. This proto-union currently exists as a customs union with aims to promote free trade, freedom of movement, and eventually a single currency. Like the EU, intercooperation between these countries makes this region of South America a prime candidate for Hyperloop. Linking the largest cities in all four countries, this Hyperloop would create South America's largest political and economic entity, consisting of over 50 million people. While the entire 2,700 km route would take three hours to travel, significantly faster than the five hours required to check in and fly, the main beneficiaries would be Sao Paulo and Rio, 
who currently lay claim to the fifth busiest flight routes in the world. Known as the Boswash Agglomeration, the northeastern United States is the most densely populated region of North America. Consisting primarily of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., these cities form a near-unbroken urban link, running for over 630 kilometers. With more than 40 million people in the catchment area, this hyperloop could connect the nation's capital with its largest city and beyond in under 50 minutes. Texas is America's second largest state in both size and population, but unlike the dense Northeast, its economic centers are spread further apart, placing limits on where people can live and work. Houston, San Antonio and Dallas are the state's largest cities and three of the largest in the United States, forming a region that has become known as the Texas Triangle. Linking these cities and broadening their economic reach would further diversify their economies while providing more employment and housing opportunities for Texans across the state. The state capital of Austin, as well as Fort Worth, would also be added to the loop, creating an economic region of over 18 million people with access to jobs in the state government, space agencies, oil, telecommunications and aviation sectors, all in under 30 minutes from any direction. Much like Texas, California is a large and populous state with far-spread economic centers. Distinct economies have formed in cities across the state, such as entertainment in Los Angeles, technology in the San Francisco Bay Area, and manufacturing in San Diego. While this concentration of specific industries is good for jobs, the cost of living in these cities has risen to levels that most people simply cannot afford. With San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, San Diego and Los Angeles making up five of the ten most expensive cities in the United States, connecting these centres to more affordable regions would open up a range of housing options, addressing the critical challenges of affordability and lagging infrastructure. The Californian Hyperloop could begin in San Diego and head north through Los Angeles, before connecting the regional cities of Bakersfield and Fresno to San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, and finally the state's capital, Sacramento. Including the more affordable Fresno and Bakersfield at the midpoint of this 900-kilometer journey puts them less than 30 minutes from any portal along the route and would make commuting to any of California's economic hubs significantly easier. Did your city make our list of suggested routes? Which regions would you most like to see connected by Hyperloop in the future? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.